Is there a difference between a free floating dollar and a floating exchange rate compared to something like the Swiss franc? Is floating the same as a fixed exchange rate where the central bank can actively step in to stabilize the market? So great question on this one. And there's different types of exchange rate regimes that central banks use. Uh, the most commonly used ones or the ones that we normally work with are free floating exchange rates. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll touch on, on exactly what that means in a second. But there's also things like managed floats. Now, that can be classified as being a transparent float or a dirty float. You also get, like you said, fixed exchange rates or peg rates. Then you get things like crawling pegs, basket pegs. So there's different types of regimes uh, used by various central banks. Now, the reason why central banks try to adopt a specific exchange rate regime is to try and solve what we call the impossible triangle. Now, there's three things that a central bank always wants to try and do. They want to have policy independence as far as possible. Uh, they want to have free flowing capital. So they don't want to be, uh, you know, they want to uh, want any policy that restricts free flow, um, free flowing capital, uh, whether that means into or out of the country. And they also want to try and have a stable exchange rate, right? A stable exchange rate is is you know, oftentimes just as important as having a stable inflation rate or a stable growth rate. Having a stable exchange rate goes a long way into um, obviously helping companies that trade, uh, you know, imports, exports, etc. It's important to keep that currency stable or as far as possible at least. So they try to implement various types of regimes. Now, the difference between something like a free floating exchange rate and a fixed exchange rate as per your question, is let, let's start with a fixed exchange rate. Now, a fixed exchange rate is one where um, the central bank doesn't really allow the currency to deviate from a specific value. What they normally do is they either fix it or peg it to a, a different currency. So maybe pegging it against the US dollar. That's normally how it's used. Um, in the case of something like the Swiss franc a couple of years ago, it was, of course, pegged to the euro exchange rate. So a fixed or a peg exchange rate means that the central bank won't allow it to, to deviate. Now, sometimes there's, they allow it to deviate within a band, um, as was the case with that euro peg a couple of years ago, where they allowed it to, uh, to deviate from a specific level, but they would normally peg it to a specific rate. Um, so that is considered as a fixed uh, rate, a fixed rate currency regime. Now, the problem with a fixed rate, or let's start with the benefits of a fixed rate exchange regime, is that when you keep your exchange rate fixed, you obviously have complete control over that exchange rate, right? So that means that you achieve a stable exchange rate, which is the bottom left of that impossible triangle. And it also means that you won't really be, um, you know, uh, 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 limiting the free flow of capital, which is great. But what you lose by doing that is obviously policy independence. So... If you are a central bank that keeps your currency pegged, that keeps it fixed, uh, there isn't really any policy independence, which can sometimes lead to markets not trusting the currency, right? That's one of the big challenges that the markets have with something like the, uh, the Chinese yuan, even though um, it's been allowed, for example, to strengthen this year. The main focus of what I just said is that it's been allowed to do so by the PBOC. And even though they want to you know, have the markets believe that it's a, um, you know, it's it's based on, uh, it's based on market forces, you know, the markets decide where it goes. It's not really the case, right? They set the midpoint, they decide how much it can depreciate or appreciate. Um, so it's not really seen as a free floating currency, if that makes sense. Some see it as a fixed, some see it as a, um, in my opinion, it's more it's more like a dirty float, and I'll explain what that means in a second. Now, then you get the complete opposite of that, which is a complete free floating exchange rate, and that is something like the dollar, you know, something like the Aussie and the Kiwi and the Euro and the pound. Most of your developed market currencies are free floating exchange rate regimes. Now, that means that the central bank. Um, allows the currency to fluctuate alongside market forces, whether that is fluctuating with supply and demand, whether that's fluctuating purely based on speculation, doesn't matter. They allow the currency um, exchange rate to be manipulated or dictated by market forces and not by themselves. That means that they won't step in you know, to, um, to change monetary policy 
to, to, to target a specific exchange rate. They will allow it to fluctuate up and down based on how the markets dictate where it should be going. Now, uh, what you gain with that is obvious. You gain policy independence because it means that, you know, you, you don't, um, you, you act, um, you, you, can, you can do monetary policy without worrying about keeping the exchange rate fixed. You've got total freedom in how you react because you're not worried on, on not necessarily that they're not worried about what happens to the exchange rate, but they, they don't target the exchange rate, if that makes sense. So that gives them policy independence. It also gives them, you know, free flowing capital. You won't really restrict capital by any means. But what they lose, of course, is a stable exchange rate because by allowing the markets to dictate where that currency goes, you know, you can have some wild swings, some major moves um, in that currency, both up and down, because again, it's dictated by what the market says it should be valued at. And that obviously means that they lose the stability. So it's an impossible triangle, right? You can't, you can't have all three of them you're going to have to choose which two you are you are more comfortable with and basically allow the other one to uh, to go to waste, so to speak. Now, when it comes to something like the the dollar and the Swiss franc, the dollar obviously is a free floating currency. Um, you know, there will be many people out there that says it's everything is manipulated. As far as this is concerned, you know, as far as basic economics is, are concerned, the dollar is seen as a free floating currency. So to our most of the major currencies now. After the float or the peg was removed um, with the Swiss franc and the euro, you know, some participants have said that it is now also a free floating currency. But if you understand what a managed float is, um, in my opinion, the Swiss franc is a managed float. It's not a free floating currency. Now, what are some of the characteristics of a managed float? Now, a managed float is where your central bank regularly tries to intervene in the forex market to try and influence where the exchange rate goes, right? And if it's a dirty float, that means that the bank will try and keep those activities, um, try and keep it secret, right? They, they um, think of in terms of the, the, the SNB, they are known to intervene in the markets um, they are known to, you know, to intervene by site deposits. So people use the site deposits data to estimate how much the central bank has been intervening in the FX market. Now, you know, if you if they intervene in the FX market by side deposits, that, that can't be a free floating currency, right? That can't be a free floating um, exchange rate regime. Uh, that's a manipulated one. That's a managed float. It's not a free floating currency. And the reason why I classify that more as a dirty one as opposed to a transparent one is that. There are certain central banks who are completely transparent and open when they um, manipulate the currency. You will oftentimes see you know, some central banks coming out saying that um, they intervened in the FX market because the currency was getting too strong or they intervened in the FX market because the currency was getting too weak. And they did it by buying X amount of this or doing this type of open market operations or intervening in XYZ manner. Um, those are more transparent managed flows, meaning that it's not free floating, it's managed, but it's transparently, uh, it's done transparently by the central bank. Now, if you compare that to what the SMB does, do they tell us when they've intervened? No, they don't. They just tell us that, hey, if it gets too strong, we're going to intervene. We don't know when they're going to do that. They don't announce when they've done that. Um, you know, they keep it secret. They keep it disclosed. And, you know, for me, that means that it's, it's a dirty managed float because they they're not transparent in the way that they um that they intervene in the fx markets now to some extent um you know if you compare that to something like the chinese yuan you can say that the chinese yuan is actually from a managed float perspective it's more transparent than dirty because they tell us where they set the midpoint they tell us when they've you know uh, um, ask state um, owned enterprises to intervene in the FX markets or the or the equity space. So in some in some sense, you know, your Chinese yuan is more is more transparent compared to the Swiss franc, which is you know that that's that's saying a lot. But um, in terms of in terms of the dollar and the Swiss franc, the dollar is your your typical free floating currency. While in my opinion, something like the Swiss franc, even though it's no longer a a pegged currency exchange rate like it was a couple of years ago pegged to the euro when they removed the peg they didn't you know have a it, it, it wasn't a free floating currency by any means they've been uh, you know deliberately intervening in the fx markets if you take a look at 
at site deposit data, they've been deliberately intervening to, um, to, to, to dictate where the exchange rate sh should go versus the euro. And that for me can't be a free floating exchange rate. That for me is a managed float because they're managing where it goes. And in my opinion, it's a dirty one because they, they stay secretive of when they do that. And you know, just another reason, like I said earlier today, why I don't really trust the Swiss franc um, you know, after 2015, it's, it's just not a currency that I'm interested in trading uh, because I, I, I don't think that the, uh, the central bank can be trusted. Um, you know, uh, so th that's just a quick rundown of exactly what it is, what the different exchange rates are um, and the difference between the, uh, the dollar and the Swiss franc, at least my interpretation of it. I'm sure there will be many participants that have a different view of, of how they view it, but that is uh, that's the way that um, that I see these two currencies. I hope that helps. Dylan, any other questions? Don't hesitate to let us know.